Hello everyone, I'm Sadish from FTC 9794 Wizards at EXE, and today in this video we're going to talk about getting vision set up to identify the number of rings in the starting stack in this year's game Ultimate Goal. So the game was released yesterday and we're going to introduce a simple way to complete the vision task. Uh, so this method assumes that you already have an Android Studio project for this year's FTC season set up, and if you don't, go ahead and do that. We also have videos to teach you how to do this, and I've already linked them in the description. So before we move on, make sure you have that done. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Easy Open CV library on GitHub that's linked to the description and it has been developed for FTC teams to do vision tasks easily. The first thing you want to do is open up Android Studio. So the GitHub page over here actually gives you uh, all the documentation that you need and right now I'm just going to go ahead and walk through it. So I'm loading up the Game Changers Android Studio project uh, for the vision. So now that you have the Android Studio project open, the first thing we're going to do is go to Gradle Scripts and double click on build.common.gradle all the way at the top and that's going to open up this file. So there's two things that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to scroll down to the bottom as shown in the documentation and you're going to want to make sure that you put this line J center uh, and uh, open parentheses, close parentheses right under the repositories. So once you've done that, you want to also scroll up and make sure that your min SDK version is 23. If it says 19, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and type the numbers 23. So something you should notice after you've changed this is you should see something over here that said Gradle files have changed since last project sync. So we're going to click sync now after we make our next change to the build.cradle for module team code. So that's right over here. Uh, go ahead and open that up. And you want to add this line, implementation, and then org open FTC easy open CV 1.4.1. And you want, the, want to add this exact line under the dependencies. And once you've done that, you want to go ahead and click sync now. And while the Gradle project sync is in progress, you need to download a file to put onto your robot controller phone. And that's the file that you'll find right over here and the GitHub page, but it's also in the Go file that's linked in the description. So go ahead and download that file and then put it on your robot controller phone in the first uh, folder of the internal storage, as you can see on the screen. Okay, so once you've done that, you have now successfully set up OpenCV. Now let's talk about the code. So now I'm going to walk through the code for you. So this is the Java program you should download from the same Go file link where you found the .so file that you put on your robot controller phone. So I'm just going to run through the code and uh, and do it like for you pretty simply. Okay, so right over here we're initializing the pipeline and the uh, phone camera. So you can see uh, right over here it says camera direction dot back, and what's that saying is that we're going to be using the back camera on our robot controller phone. You can also use the front camera and uh, you can also look at the documentation for Easy Open CV if you're using a control hub and an external webcam as they have documentation that, that teaches you how to use a web external webcam and the control hub. So right over here this is basically taking a stream from the robot controller phone's webcam. And then we define that there's either four rings in the stack, one ring, or no rings. And right over here, we're basically creating a box with these coordinates. So the box it appears on the camera input. And the box is, whatever is inside the box is, is what's being analyzed. So you're going to want to make sure that you adjust the width, height, and coordinates for the box to match up with where your rings are going to be relative to the camera. So th these two threshold values are the threshold values that we measured that tell us, okay, so this value tells us that there are four rings, this value tells us that there is one ring, and anything less than that, as you can see over here, tells us that there are no rings. So if, if your average value of whatever is inside that box is greater than your threshold for four ring, which is 150 in our case, uh, but this will change for you, of course, and you guys will have to do your own testing, uh, but if that's if it's greater than the four ring threshold, then we know that the position that there's four rings. And if it's greater than the one ring threshold, we know that there's one ring. And if it's uh, and otherwise, if it's less than one thirty five, then we know that there are zero rings. So the the value that we're actually comparing to the thresholds 
is what we're taking, we're taking the RGB frame from whatever's inside the box and converting it to YCRCB. And then we extract that CB channel to the CB variable. And that's just comparing how far away the pixels inside the box, inside that green box, are from the color red. And because orange is the color of the rings and that's pretty close to red, the lower that the lower the number is, um, the lower the number is, then the closer it is to red. So we can see that when the average value is greater than our four ring threshold, then we know that there are four rings. So now I'm going to show you a demo of how this program works. So over here on the uh, on my screen, we can see I pulled up an Imgur library that has different pictures uh, with a different amount of rings um, on the field. So you can see in this picture there are four rings, one ring, one ring, four rings, and then these two pictures just have no rings. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to switch over and now we're going to look at the screens of the robot controller and the driver station phone. So if you look at the at the, uh, the robot controller phone on the right hand side, you can see when I initialize the program, you'll actually see how a camera window pops up and a little a uh, green rectangle pops up wherever I set the coordinates to. And now I'm going to pull up an image with four uh, with four rings. So you can see this is an image with four rings. And now I'm going to run the program and you can see how over here it actually says analysis 128 and position none. So this analysis number is the threshold value that I was talking about before. So now once I point it to my screen and this Imgur library, you can actually see how it says position four. So you can see as I focus it onto the four ring stack, you can see how it actually gives me an analysis value that corresponds to four. And now if we switch over and we go to the image with maybe one ring, and I point the, rec the rectangle over here, you can see how it says analysis, it gives me the threshold value, and from that threshold value, it knows that there's only one ring in the stack. Finally, when we go to the image from the same angle with zero rings, we can see how the analysis value says 126 and it's fluctuating a little bit, but it knows from this threshold value that there are no rings whatsoever. So that wraps up this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email at wizards.exe at gmail.com or leave it in the comments. Also, please stay on the lookout on our YouTube channel for any new videos relating to this year's game as we will be releasing some very soon. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, thank you for watching and good luck to any teams participating in this year's challenge.